Hello and welcome to Creative Sewing. I'm Aideen Cross and I'm delighted you can meet, join us again here for our Meant to Love series um, in association with Kildare County Council and the Healthy Ireland programme. Um, our Metro Love series at this month, of course, is January and it's the new beginnings and we're going to be doing um, a door wreath to start off with, um, one of our little circle door wreaths here and something nice and cheery, of course, uh, for the new beginnings of the year and it's looking nice to, to look at or if somebody visits the house, indeed, it'd be lovely to cheer up any door or house. The door wreath, of course, the um, symbols symbolises the circle, unending circle of life and um, what better way to do it when do it in, in something nice and cheery and something fresh for the spring season. Now I've just used some organza and some little leaves and that and of course we've used our willow as well and decorated with a little bow. But if you can want to decorate it a little bit more, certainly you can add some little fairy lights or something to it. Certainly it might be nice too as well and do it with your own twist on it. If you want to make one and give it to a friend, it'd be certainly lovely, lovely to, to make and lovely to receive as well. Okay, so let's get started. We have our pack here and we have our willow with a slight bend on it there and your couple of uh, little um, leaves as well. We can leave those over to the one side um, because they won't be used for a while. We have our wire and a couple of little ties as well just for the, um, for the willow. And again, the last little string as well. So we'll put that over to one side as well. A uh, couple of pieces of ribbon then for tying together and um, and making the bow then as well. So that should be fine. And of course we have our pack of little um, inserts then for our uh, flowers as well. So we'll leave that over to one side too. In, now to start into our um, making our flowers, as I say, you'd want to give your organs a little bit of a press. Um, it'd be no harm just to kind of straighten it out. And what we need to do then is strips of um, eight centimeters, around eight centimeters. Now it doesn't have to be too precise, but I think that's roughly what I have done here is mark out eight, mark out eight centimeters. And actually it's nine there. So I'm just going to leave that one nine. So if some of them are a little bit bigger than others, that's fine too. So three little marks there in the side of your organza on the edge of it. Now you will notice that the edge of your organza is torn rather than cut. That's where I have torn it and there'll probably be strings coming out, but that's fine too. It's just kind of a little rustic look we're going for anyway. So we can nip into those um, markers that we have done there. Okay, like so and what I want you to do then is actually tear them down okay they should tear right down along okay so you'll have three big long continuous strips okay so you can do this for the plain ivory one and then I want you to repeat that your three three strips then left and then I want you to repeat the same then for the printed one measure flatten it out to the end and then measuring roughly eight centimeters then down along okay and like that if the last one is a little longer that's no problem at all don't actually try and trim it up so cutting your nicks in three nicks in and then we need to pull it down along again to make another three strips okay and that should give you a nice even cut then on it okay so we have it so like that so we have three and three there okay so leaving some over to one side and just picking one plane and one printed, okay? So I'm putting my plane on the bottom and putting the printed on the top. Some of that printed might be darker some sides than the other right side, but it's hard to, to differentiate, but th there is no right or wrong side to it really, but you can just flip it over whatever side that you're happy with. So what I'm going to do then is actually to get a needle and thread so if you thread up a needle and thread then um, into some, well, I have just some white thread doubled over and a knot on the end of it, okay? And on the end here where the two come together on one end, I want you to do a running stitch. So it's in and out, pull it out, and you can go in and out a few times if you want. A very long tack tacking stitch, okay? Big running tacking, tacking stitch because what we're going to be doing is actually pulling it okay in the end so keeping the two together and close to the edge then doing your running stitch all the way down okay along like so checking that your pieces are together and going right up and down in between in and catching both pieces and keeping near the edge okay so that's your 
piece running it along the edge now if you want more try and do one continuous piece of thread so don't don't add on another piece of thread so when you get start to run short pull it a little bit like that okay and then we can continue then with more thread because we need one continuous piece of thread then of course to pull it now we're at the end here now so normally i would say to you do a back stitch but no no back stitch at all just leave it loose and you can just leave it hanging there and just kind of spread out your gathers then just a little bit then just to give yourself kind of a little fan effect like that okay and your needle is still attached there that's fine okay so what i want you to do now is actually we're going to cut in so get your sh sharp scissors and we're going to cut off that kind of um selvage end just at an angle okay and then we're going in at a point like that and then back in at another point so in at a point this way and in at a point that way okay just to give all the peaks so and as deep as you can go without cutting your thread you certainly don't want to cut your thread so again in one side start with the point at the top there and then into it, making these in it the whole way along. So by making these, then you end up making points. So that'll be the points of the flower. But you're cutting through right through the two the two layers. Now continue continue on the whole way around, just spreading out a little bit of the gathers as you go. And again, cutting in, it's cutting into a V. Some of them will be longer than others. Don't worry, it's nice to have a little variation as well. Some will be thicker th than others. It's a random, because we'll be gathering this all up, so there'll be no measurement on it as such, but kind of keep it nice and deep, but down as deep as about, I suppose it'd be about two centimeters from the bottom there, on most of them at least anyway, but be careful not to cut the thread. Now we're nearly at the end here now, so continuing with your V's, okay, and at the end I like to cut off that um, selvage, so kind of just give, do your last one then cutting off the bits of selvage because it does look a little bit different than the others when you start pulling it together. So you'll end up with a whole lot of triangles, I don't know what you'd, you could think of another project to do with those if you want it, if you were very creative. Have it all tacked along the top and you just pull it then gently. And of course, that's why you want a very good knot at the beginning, just because you will be putting it a little bit under pressure. And you just gently tease it along, okay? Leaving on, of course, do not cut off or do a back stitch, leaving your thread just hanging there. And you'll end up then with it all kind of something like that, all hanging down from one side, okay? And the next thing we'll be do will be will be will be trying to roll it up then so getting it about that size there and rolling it up as such just kind of spinning it back round on itself just once and when at that stage then we can do a little stitch across it okay like so there'll still be some of those little threads coming out there as well but not to worry and rolling it again okay rolling it again on top of itself and you can put another little stitch in there, or two. And rolling it, it'll only be rolled two or three times because that's, by the time you have it gathered, that literally is only the size of it. So that'll be what it's end up like. With all your feathery pieces in your hand and then the gather pieces on the top. So we're stabbing right through then there, if you can see what I'm doing just four or five times then just to kind of secure it right through kind of stabbing through right through the, the whole lot okay so that's your flower almost made now we have to do the centers so what i will do is actually use my thread there not cutting it off and if you, or if you haven't got it long enough if you think you haven't a long enough piece finish off the piece and get another piece but I, mine is long enough so what i will do is actually find a center just put my finger into where the center would be and stab it right up into it, okay? 
Now we need to get our little centre pieces that were in the bag there and I probably have given you more than enough so you can actually use two or three. Some of them are coloured, some of them are not. So literally I was going to use um, three there on this one um, but you might just use even two. So it's, what you're doing is you're laying where you have the centres there, you're laying them across the centre okay and then you're wrapping over the thread over the top and stabbing back down okay so laying them across the center and then literally having your thread come over come over the middle of them and again i do it twice come up to the center again and then just literally stabbing back down so your um, little center pieces are lying this way and then your thread is going across the middle the opposite way okay just to secure them and it's kind of bending them in half for you i suppose really and you're stabbing back down through the center again to the back all right so you end up with the little feathery pieces coming out little centers okay but you're at your at the back here now again and what you want to do then at the back then is just secure it you want to do a cold cross again and you can use up all your thread if you want then just stabbing and just reassuring the back of it then as well and then do a little back stitch finding a little corner to do a little back stitch because we will be stitching them again onto the reed then of course as well and cutting all right so that's your little flower now okay and that will have to be repeated of course three times then we have our little centers they're kind of hidden in there but they can be separated to be found as well so you need to do that three times now your three flowers made and ready to go now we can just leave those over to one side for now and now we'll start on our um, reeds okay and they're slightly bent um, as you can see but we'll need a little bit of persuasion just to kind of get them into the shape that we want to okay so gentle persuasion and i suppose there's no set i'll just have your circle okay and um, if you want kind of just tipping on the size of the a4 paper okay that's what i would be working on okay so you're holding it at this the the thickest end there and wrapping it round and now it might be slightly more oval but as we add more to it it will become more of a circle okay now starting it off is probably the most important so we're literally going to use um, a little cable tie there and just wrapping it over in half and putting your cable tie on and hearing those clicks okay and that'll just make it secure just so you can get wreck and start get going with the rest of them the rest of the reeds as well okay and keep it in place okay hear that last click now we won't need the rest of that so we can cut that off okay and then we can um literally start twisting a little bit round the gentle round then of the rest of that okay so that's one there done so we'll go with another one here and Okay, I'll turn that one and literally where we start now is we have our tie here with the thick end and then we have our thin end here so we're continuing if you can if you can match up your thin end continuing in the same direction then and um, start with your thick end there okay okay and we put that there and we put our another cable another cable tie there okay that'll be at the top okay so it'll be one bit at the top and one will be at the bottom is so that's that one should be at the top and one should be at the bottom okay and cutting off any excess so it's well secured there at that so following your line then and just trying to wrap it in through okay like so okay just threading it round okay going round with the with the circle but as you go round then you actually bring it back in, kind of twisting it round a little bit as well. Okay, so you're twisting it round it as well, not just literally going round with it. Round with it and then twisting it round. Okay, and making sure that the piece doesn't come out of the cable tie. And you can pull off little bits that might be rough around the edges as well. So again, twisting it back round in through, just gentle not to break it okay again twisting it back round until you use all your 
bead, okay? So twisting like that so slightly until you come to the end, okay? So there's your end there, a little thin end. Okay, again, and so what we can do then is start with another, start with another thick end. We finish off our thin end and we start with a thick end. So we finish one, one there and we start with a thick. So what you can do now, instead of tying it in, we can actually just poke it in through and hold it. Okay, so if you hold it tight there, where your piece is, and poke it, poke it in underneath. Okay, and because I don't want too many table ties on this either. Okay, and to twisting it round. See where I'm twisting it round and twisting it round. And that's quite a short one actually. It ends up right exactly where this is again. Okay, but that's okay too. All right, so we have another one. We should have four or five in each one. Starting again at a thin end, sticking it in and just going in the same direction. So we're going in the same direction the whole time. Okay, but we just wrap them, layering on another piece. Okay, and wrapping on another piece of the willow. And I have a lot of thick ones starting there, so I think I'll start a little further down with this thick one, okay? And wrap it around there like so. Okay, so gently not to break it, just tease it round, tease it round, okay? If you can, nice and gently. Okay, so I have a couple of ends there. I think I might use a little bit of the wire again. So pulling out a little bit of the wire, well, you will get bits falling off, but that's no little shreddy pieces. That's okay. So starting in the middle and then wrapping around good and tight. Okay. Both sides, giving a good pull on it and holding it tight with your hand. And then to finish off, then we kind of twist the two sides. Okay, good and tight. My hand, until you get a good, good twist on it there like so. A little bit thin on this end, so I'm going to start by tucking in my thicker end in here. Okay, and I'm going to go around here just to thicken up that edge. It must be where the other one got short. Okay, so round and round. Okay, again, the end is little tiny end has just broken off that, not to worry. And the end of those now is sticking up. To try and wrap over the top of them if I can, just to very and again that's just broken there as well. So not to worry, again I have another little piece of wire and I'll just secure that as well. Look at the break, it's not not a not a huge thing, just use your little bits of wire that I have kind of to tie them back in. And you can always decorate um, you know, put the few little fairy lights. Um, on just to add a little extra touch at the end too. Um, it'd be nice to keep that little light, a little twinkle about them too. It'd give them an extra special touch on the door um, as well. It's always nice to see a little bit of light and um, a little bit of a, a twinkle this time of the year in January. Okay, so that's almost it now. Fairly secure. Actually, I have another bit of wire there still, so I'll just use up what I have. Okay, so that's our piece, okay? If it is a little bit oval, I don't think that's going to matter too much. I have a cable tie on the top there, a cable tie on the bottom. Needle and thread then thread it up, okay, with a knot on the end of it, but we're going to literally just start. I'm going to make this my bottom. So the last literally eight or 10 inches there on the bottom, we kind of work it by eye. Okay, so folding over, okay? So holding it over and put a good stitch with a good knot in it. Put a good few stitches in it and get it good and secure. Okay. Now if you want, you can go through some of the some of the um, willow there as well, just to kind of give it a little bit of a, a crispness as well. So then you can leave your thread out there. Continue then to wrap around, okay, just holding it as you go. And we're just going to wrap around, layering it up as you go. Okay, and that will secure the end of it there as well. Okay, so any little bits that are sticking out, we're going to be binding them basically. So that will give it a little bit more strength. So wrapping and continuing round. Okay. That's it. Until you've gone about six or eight inches. Okay, giving it a good nice secure pull on it like that 
And what I'm going to do, instead of cutting it off, I'm going to go work my way back loosely as well. I'm working my way back because I have my thread on this side, if you remember. So if you have enough, work your way back, okay? And folding back in your little loose edges and we can just hem that then, okay? Okay, so you're looking, this is the bottom of your wreath and this is your top. Um, there's my three flowers just trying to arrange and see what be best, I suppose, with them. I suppose I'll start with this one here on this edge. I still have my thread joined on there, or if you need a new thread, do. So a little stitch from there, and of course, a little stitch onto your satin then, or your ribbon edge that you're after putting on, and a little stitch from the back there. Okay, so small stitches all the way around. A little bit from the flower, a little bit from the, in the ribbon. That's it, that's one on there, okay. And we'll just move and move on our, on our thread or get new thread to do the next one, okay. So again, a little bit a stitch on, on the ribbon and a little bit on the flower. And going over and back like that, going all around the flower. These door wreaths are lovely and very attractive on, on the doors and it's only when you take down your Christmas one you, 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 you feel like, oh I need something else on the door, it looks bare then. So certainly January is a great time for putting back up another nice bright um, bit of colour on the door and um, it greets you when you come to your own door, which is lovely indeed. All right, But as I say, nothing as nice as making one and giving it for a friend as well. and. Um, so it's always lovely to get a handmade gift, isn't it? Right, that's two. And then the third one then, probably even work from this side, probably even even better, even easier then to work it from this side. So just running your thread along. Yeah, so eight or 10 stitches on each one. So what, I still have my bit of thread there, so we're trying to then go, to, go and choose our little leaves then I suppose just to kind of tease it around I put them either side and I put the little bit at the bottom so literally working from there which side have I got my thread on this side so I'll start off with this one again making sure they're on the back there but facing out to the front okay and a little few stitches on the satin then across that should do it just to re reinforce it holding its own and just go down along the stem with as well just to leave it a little bit more secure too. So stitching on our other green then on the other side again just uh, working on the back but making sure you have your leaf facing out to the front okay and as I say eight or ten stitches up along the stem just to secure it making sure it's peeking out there behind the flowers and working your way back down just to secure it. Okay, and put some of these little coloured ones then down at the end here. Okay, so I'm going to leave them kind of hanging off the edge. Okay, so I'll just kind of secure those. And you definitely will want eight or 10 stitches and then just finishing off your, with a back stitch then as well and cutting, cutting off. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Oh yeah, that looks great. Put your little leaves hanging down um, there on the bottom. And then we have our little bits of rope here and we'll add those on first okay because then we want to stitch on our bow okay and this can these can be used to hang it up as well okay so literally tying across the top and we can tie a good knot on it okay all right and then I like to have one of them hanging down with the with the um, ribbons. So I'm just folding back up the top of the other one, letting one hang down, and then the top of the other one then for hanging it, I'm folding it back down and I'm actually putting a knot in it. Okay. All right, so that's your loop for hanging it on the door. Okay, and then we have a little piece hanging down there. So we need to make our bow now. So we have our bow here and what I would like to do is actually half it there, find halfway and make one wing, I've decided about three or four inches or 10 centimetres maybe at that cent outside and the same out that side. So you have two loops of 10 centimetres either side and then what I'd normally do is crisscross the two loops 
and tuck one underneath, okay? And then literally carefully just finding the little corners and the ears of the bow and pulling it out, okay? And that's it should be, that's the best way I find to make the bow. And then you can tease it out what size you want, then pulling back on the little pieces and the little legs of it as well, okay? And twisting it around until you get it right. Now the ends of those are probably too long, but I'm not going to worry about that. Just for the minute, I'm going to stitch it on and then I'm going to trim it up. So with a needle and thread again, I'm just, you have your little piece of rope there to stitch it onto. So a little few stitches on the back there. Right, so that's your bow stitched on and a good back stitch. So we off our thread and we're looking at that thinking, well, they're quite long. And I so I think I'll just trim them up. And of course I'm trimming them then with a little bit of a point. And I always like to do one longer than the other just to kind of to make it a little bit more natural looking. Okay, so actually that is your wreaths done. Okay, and I just trim up that little length there as well then just to think it's a little bit too long in it. So that's your wreath there finished, okay. Now that's our door wreath completed and I think it looks quite well and it certainly will cheer you up when you arrive back at your house. And um, I'm delighted you could join me today and I hope you uh, enjoyed the tutorial and uh, certainly join us again for another tutorial uh, next month in more of the Med to Love uh, tutorials. Hope you enjoyed it. Best of luck. Bye bye.